Let's continue looking at our pressure control valves, looking at this pilot operated pressure reducing valve. We can see that it's pilot operated because the main spool won't lift up until the pilot pop it is opened at the predetermined pressure set by the adjusting spool right here, changing the spring tension right there. So as our pressure, let's say we set this spool to open at 1500, once 1500 PSI is reached on the top side of this main piston here, what we'll see is that pressure is also equal at the bottom side or the orifice that's trying to open up this little check valve or this little poppet that's inside of there. And when it opens, it's actually going to drain that oil externally. And so a pilot operated pressure reducing valve, because it has pressure coming in to the supply as well as pressure on both the, the delivery work port as well as the control work port, uh, we need to have an external spring drain or an external drain that's going to go back to tank. Otherwise, this would never operate. So this pilot is setting the pressure that this spool opens up. This spool is going to open up when our desired control pressure is reached. And what I mean by that is we have some ports here on the main part of the valve we should take a look at. One of them here is the supply from the system pump via the directional control valve. And it's going to pass right through this spool. And it's going to go right through to the other side and it's going to go to a work port that we want to self send full system pressure to. Okay, and then we're also going to, if we take a look from the supply from the directional control valve, we're also going to be sending pressure and flow out this work port and this work port is going to be on the controlled circuit. So let's say this is on a grapple. That's the same as the animation that we have online. It's grabbing a tree in the grapple. So coming from our directional control valve, we want it to grab the tree and then send the flow and cut with the motor. So we're going to send full flow and pressure through this port to our motor. And we're going to send controlled pressure and flow to our grabbing arm cylinder. So as we send that pressure and flow, it's going to be equal. So if again, we use that same pressure as our relief, we see system pressure at 3000, we send flow and as the restriction starts to build, we're going to see a 1000 in both the, the motor circuit and the arm circuit. And then as this continues to build, we're going to see as we get to 1500 PSI, what's going to happen is that 1500 PSI that's in our controlled circuit is able to get through this passageway right there. And that passageway leads that oil down to the underside of this spool right here. So if we take a different view, we see that pressure coming in to the underside of the spool. This spool is hollow and that oil is able to get through the spool up into this top cavity where we're gonna have pressure plus the spring holding the spool in its normal position and it's normally open. When that pressure let's say 1500 PSI, as we talked about earlier, is able to open up this poppet right here, what happens is any increase that we would normally have sent to the cylinder, let's say the cylinder is grabbing at 1500, but because of the restriction that's there and pump flow continuing to be sent, the pressure will continue to rise. As that rising pressure gets onto the bottom side of the spool and also the top side and also this poppet, this poppet's gonna open up sending any additional pressure above the 1500 PSI out this external drain. What that means is then this spool, as pressure would have continued to rise, would be able to lift and start to close off this passageway. And as it closes off this passageway, it traps the 1500 PSI in the controlled load. So we'll see it actually closes off and then no more system oil is able to get to the controlled cylinder. There's a small feathering groove, a little V-notch cut into this spool. And what that's there for is to allow this thing to just feather just right at the equal point of leakage. So if it was running a motor in this circuit, then any internal leakage in the motor would be accounted for by this spool just fluctuating, holding it at 1500 PSI. In the meantime, the value of this valve is that we've closed off the controlled, it's trapped at 1500 PSI, 
but the rest of the system and full system pressure is able to be sent through the valve to the other side to go to a cylinder and a motor where we would be able to see full flow and 3000 PSI where we'd be able to use the full potential of the motor to cut the tree. So the point of our pressure reducing valve then is to allow us to have full flow and pressure on one side and controlled pressure on another circuit, all the while only having one directional control valve work port being used to do that. Obviously, we'd have the supply off of the directional control valve and the return coming from the cylinder and the motor that's not shown in this valve. So the reason why this is a pilot operated valve is so that we can control that 1500 PSI quite precisely with a very small pressure override. So this is like a 15 PSI spring right here, 15 to 30 kind of thing. And so that what, what that means is that we are going to have a 1500 PSI control line within that 30 PSI. So that means you're going to be anywhere from like 1470 to 1500 PSI that this would have closed off. And so you get very precise control of your controlled port.